Ja, god morgon. God morgon, lilla grisknål. Good morning. It's minus 12 Celsius today. So we're starting the day with a little fire because you know you can feel it in the cabin that it's just a little bit cold. Welcome back to Polar Night on Svalbard, everyone. The full darkness is slowly settling in, but not here quite yet. So right now we can still enjoy some of the pretty blue light for an hour or two daily. The winter has also definitely arrived and all the new snow is lying thick on the ground and the air is cold and crisp. Temperatures are dropping down to minus 20 degrees Celsius already, which is a good promise for an early winter. Proper winter means that we can start getting our snowmobiles out, but we're not quite there yet. So first we start the day with a cozy fire and a nice coffee. Oh my gosh, I'm drinking real espresso. Well, a real latte from our new machine. For the first time, or the first morning. It tastes so good. We are alone in the cabin for a week because Christopher is away on a fun project. So he's gonna be back, what is it now, in a few days? When you're watching this, he's already back. And when you're watching this, it's my birthday, by the way. How crazy. I will, on the Sunday, if you watch it then, be 34. I'm really excited about it. First of all, I thought I was turning 35. So when I realized I wasn't 30, uh, I wasn't turning 35, I felt like I bought myself new, another year. <laughs> um, so far, I'm loving the 30s. I think it's seriously my favorite kind of decade so far that I've been through in life. And I kind of think it only gets better. The 20s is so much fun, but it's chaotic and you don't know what you're doing. So in the 30s, it always feels like you have your shit together a little bit more. You don't even have to, but at least you have a better idea of who you are and what you want in life. You don't, still don't have to have it figured out, but you're on your way to figuring it out. I don't think you'll ever kind of like, no. You just have to go along with the ride. How's my fire doing? But so today we're gonna hang out and have a cozy cabin day. It, we are experiencing the gorgeous blue light. So that means that it's the last kind of bit of light that we get today. We are still not in full darkness. We will be in full darkness in maybe a week. I love this time leading up to it because it's, it's exciting and it's beautiful. And you know, you make sure to be outside a lot. Oh no, a little fire. Wait a minute. Was that too much? <laughs> it's interesting being alone in the cabin. I really like it because it gives you kind of, you know, the place to yourself for a little bit. I think it's really good to have time for yourself. Otherwise, especially me and Christopher who work together and spend every day together. It's really nice to once in a while just like have a week. So I love that. I'm not scared being in the cabin on my own because for some reason Svalbard just doesn't scare me. Even though I know like the polar bear danger and everything, I'm definitely a little bit more like all ears when it comes to sleeping at night alone here. But I mean, and I lock the doors and everything. No, that's never gonna help with a polar bear though. <laughs> I don't know, it just makes me feel better. It feels like, oh, we're, we're all secure. But then again, I completely rely on Grimm when it comes to this. Like, if I hear something outside, and if I'm like, oh, what was that? I just look at Grimm and he's like, passed out. I'm like, well, nothing. <laughs> he will notice. He was staying at Olivia and Aner's. Grimm and Fenris both sensed a polar bear outside. They heard it, they couldn't see anything, but they're like, that's not a reindeer. And it was a polar bear outside. So that gives me the confidence to know that he will let me know if something 
is outside that isn't a reindeer. I have been going to bed way too late. Tonight I went to bed at 2.30 a.m. <laughs> and then I sleep my eight hours. So I get up at what, 10.30. So important to have a schedule and I always, you know, do, but sometimes I derail. But I think I just have to kind of set my schedule and be strict with it and then. Maybe I should do that tonight. <laughs> do we think this sounds like a good plan? Okay, I think we need to hang out my sheets to air. And we also need to sweep the snow. And I think we should do that in our pajamas with shoes on, maybe a jacket even because it's cold. starting to snow. Can you believe that this is the lightest part of our day? Oh, I die for this season. Grimbo, I should have put a blinky on him. Why he's on a rope is because he gets a little bit confident <laughs> and then he just goes and explores. But I think he's around the house. He's been so good lately, like for well, lately as in a few years. Before, if you let him free, he would just go. Phew. Now he knows that he can be free so much. Like he doesn't, it's not as exciting. He's kind of like, well, I don't have to run away. I say that now and he might be on his way to the North Pole for all I know. All of the snow work we had to do for now. Oh wait, no, no, we have the front also. Graham, can we go out on? It's really nice out. We're definitely gonna go on a walk, Grimbo. Of course we are. notice when we go into the polar night that Grim sleeps so much <laughs> he spends 90% of his day sleeping 
Like, I'm not even kidding. And it's a big difference from the summer. But I think also in summer, he loves to be outside all the time. He sleeps outside at night if he's allowed to. But now I think he, he's always a little bit scared of the dark in the beginning. So he's like, mm, he doesn't want to be outside on his own. Um, so he's just inside sleeping all the time. I feel way more exhausted during the polar day versus kind of like feeling sleepy during polar night. Like it's two really different things. Like the exhausted polar day feeling is just like, it's so difficult to sleep. It's like your mind is going crazy because it's so bright versus polar night where it's just so calm and so dark that it's more kind of like your mind is so chill <laughs> that it's kind of like, you know, sleepy. Are you, what? Someone's making himself a little bed in the, in the, in the mat. Oh, hey. Har du ett ansikte? Inte, no, don't collapse. Så ja, nej. Oh, it is sleepy. Sleepy town. Jug, jug, jug. Just look at how vibrant this blue light is. Yeah, Grim, I hear you, but you gotta let me, you know, be for a second. I feel like a lot of snow is coming because it's very, very dark over there. Very bright over there. I think snow. There is no such thing as too much snow. I often start the day with like a cozy color and everything, but now I need to wake up. So I think, no, whoa, that's a little bit too much. I think we're gonna do relax. How does that feel? That's nice. When I went to the mainland, I bought some new pillowcases. So we're gonna put some on now because I want to change the vibe from very beige to, well, more brown and beige definitely a bit more kind of like vibes of um autumn and winter this is actually a red but i think i don't know if you can see it the time has come Whoa! oh yes definitely time now Some. a bed skirt and I have not washed this for a while so I think I'm gonna change to the other one that I have it's a bit more gray but it's gonna be really nice to wash this because on this side Grim sleeps often we're gonna change the sheets change the pillows and change the overthrow exciting I love a good change I really like to make a visual change to our cabin to welcome the polar night. It helps kind of set the tone for that season and I like to lean into the darkness and the darker colors. I get excited about that version of our cabin and look forward to it. All I'm really doing is changing one bedspread and some pillows, but it's enough for me to feel that we have officially entered polar night and all the coziness that comes with it. When it comes to our bed, I have previously spoken about the Scandinavian method for good sleep, which basically is just having two down duvets. I know this is done in many different parts of the world, but it's also very much the Swedish norm. Having one duvet each means you can choose one that suits your temperature preference, and there's no fighting over the covers at nighttime. 
I feel like this is very synonymous with Swedish culture, if that's the right use of that word, because Swedish culture is very much about individualism and personal space. I hang out our covers to air several times per week as it helps keep the down fresh, and it also brings in the most beautiful scent of the fresh Arctic air. The snow doesn't make them wet because it's so cold and dry here. If you are wanting to try the Swedish sleeping trick of two duvets, I recommend the down duvets from IKEA. They are great. Wow, that's cold. It is crispy today, darling. Yeah, he's smelling me. Signoria, it's cold, honey. Okay, Dean, Bobbiane. To lift up. We done. Today, your own headlamp. I think it's gonna be such a nice walk because there is no wind. And because of the snow, it's so quiet. And it looks like there might be some Northern Lights brewing in the sky. It just feels like that kind of day because it's crispy, very cold and quiet grim. Yes, it's quiet. Let's just go. Let's go. The darkness on Svalbard is probably the darkest I've ever experienced because there is no light pollution whatsoever. This means that you can see pretty much every single star in the sky. You can also see the satellites zooming across the sky. I often get the question if I have ever seen something strange and I can't say that I've seen a lot of strange thing, but there is one, one thing that I can't figure out what it is. I made a time lapse with something like 800 images and I've tried to figure out what this is and I still don't know. I don't think it's a flare gun or a plane considering its movements. I highly doubt it's a helicopter. So what is it? I truly cannot figure it out. So please give me your guesses in the comments. It might be super simple, but I just, I, I have no idea what it is. So right now that is my biggest mystery. Because Grim has a tendency to want to bark at reindeer. He finds them exciting and when they move, he wants to like, you know, go after them. But now I've managed to get it into his little head that reindeer come with treats. <laughs> so if he ever sees a reindeer and acknowledges it, but doesn't bark, he gets a treat. And weirdly enough, you know, since he's so treat motivated, this works wonders. Like, Anytime, oh, I'm out of treats, but anytime now that he sees a reindeer, he comes straight to me, super happy, super quiet, waiting for a treat. And I'm like, you know what? 
that is exactly what you should be doing. Wait, is he re eating reindeer poop? No. And we're getting some northern lights as well. What a walk. It's so beautiful. There's a lot of reindeer around, a lot. So he can't run freely. All right, let's walk home. Oh, there we go. Let's go. Who told you that it was too late? When was it that you started leaning that way? Four tires cut into the clay. It dries up and now there's just one road to take. It's growing up over with green. So easy to drive on, but not what it seems. The poison is spilling upstream. And it's taking out. Vi tar den här och gör små pinnar. We're gonna need this and this. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I call this the shroom. Wow. See that there? Technical, very technical. Mm, that's so good. Thank you so much for watching this video and for continuing to support my channel. I really appreciate you. I know that lots of you love the Polar Night as much as I do, so I am very excited about documenting life on Svalbard during this magical season. When you watch this, I will be celebrating my birthday with lots of cake. So I hope you have an amazing day. I will see you next week. Lots of love from us on Svalbard. Bye!